हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द फोर्टी फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ मॉडर्न इंडिया द ऑपरेशन ब्लू स्टार इन आवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड द खलिस्तान मूवमेंट इन पंजाब बाय 1984 सिचुएशन वेंट आउट ऑफ कंट्रोल एंड फाइनली आर्मी हैड टू बी कॉल्ड टू कर द मूवमेंट लेट एस फर्स्ट डिस्कस द प्रिपरेशन बाय बोथ साइड्स By 1984, the conflict in the Punjab assumed dangerous proportions. The attacks on Hindu civilians grew more frequent. On 30th April 1984, a senior Sikh police officer, a particular scourge of the terrorists, was killed. Then, on 12th May, Ramesh Chander, son of the editor Jagat Narayan and inheritor of his mantle, was also murdered. By now, Bindran Wale's men had begun fortifying the Golden Temple. Fortification was supervised by Shubhak Singh, a former Major General of the Indian Army, a one-time hero of the 1971 war, who had trained the Mukti Bahini. Under Shubhak's guidance, the militants began laying sandbags on turrets and occupying high buildings and towers. around the temple complex the men on these vantage points were all in wireless contact with shubek in the akal takht an attack by government troops was clearly anticipated the defenses were prepared in the hope that they might hold out long enough to provoke a general uprising among sikhs in the villages and a mass march towards the besieged temple enough food was stocked to last the defenders a month the other side too was preparing for action on 31st may major general r s prar was summoned from mirpur where he was in charge of an infantry division and told he would have to lead the operation to rid the temple of terrorists he knew shubhak singh well shubhak singh had been prar's instructor at the indian military academy at dehradun and they had worked together in the bangladesh operation brar was briefed by two lieutenant generals sundarji and dayal the government believed that the situation in punjab had passed out of control of the civil administration the center's attempts to arrive at the settlement with akalis had run aground the akalis had failed to convince pindranwal to dismantle the fortification and leave the temple in fact they were themselves getting more militant the akali leader sant longowal had announced that on 3rd june he would lead a movement to stop the passage of grain from the state a siege was considered and rejected because of the fear of a rebellion in the countryside the prime minister had thus decided after much reluctance that the militants had to be flushed out brar was asked to plan and lead what was being called operation blue star with the mandate that it should be finished in 48 hours if possible with no damage to the golden temple itself and with minimum loss of life let us now see how the actual operation took place Within 24 hours of this briefing the army began moving into Amritsar taking over control of the city from paramilitary On 2nd June a young Sikh officer entered the temple posing as a pilgrim and spent an hour walking around carefully noting the preparations made for its defense Patrols were also sent to study the vantage points occupied by the militants outside which would have to be cleared before the assault on the night of 2nd june the prime minister spoke on all india radio she appealed to all sections of punjab not to shed blood but shed hatred the call was disingenuous since the army was already preparing for its assault on 3rd punjab's road rail and telephone links were cut off but 
In Amritsar itself, the curfew was lifted to allow pilgrims to mark the anniversary of the martyrdom of Guru Arjun Dev. The next day saw sporadic firing in temple's perimeter as army tried to knock out the towers occupied by the militants. That day and the next, announcements were broadcast over loudspeakers asking pilgrims to leave the temple. The attack itself was launched on the night of 5th. Brar's hope was that the peripheral parts of the temple would be seized by the midnight, after which a lodgement would be placed within the Akal Takht, reinforcement sent up and the whole place cleared by the morning of the next day. His plan grievously underestimated the number of militants, their firepower, their skill and their resolve. Every window in the Akal Takht had been boarded up with snipers placed to fire through cracks from within. Other militants with machine guns and grenades were scattered through the complex using their knowledge of its narrow passages and verandas to launch surprise attacks on the advancing troops. By 2 am on the 6th, the troops were a fair way behind schedule. Finally, permission from Delhi was requested to use tanks to break the defences. By dawn, several tanks, the estimates ranging from 5 to 13, had broken through the temple's gates and taken up positions. Through much of the day, they rained fire on Akal Takht. In the evening, it was deemed safe to send troops into the building to capture any defenders who might still remain. They found Shubek Singh dead in the basement, still clutching his carbine with a walkie-talkie next to his body. They also found in the basement the bodies of Bindran Mal and his devoted follower Amrik Singh of the All India Sikh Students Federation. The government estimated the death toll at 4 officers, 79 soldiers and 492 terrorists. Other accounts place the number of deaths much higher at perhaps 500 or more troops and 3000 others. Many of these pilgrims caught in the crossfire. R. S. Brar remarks, Notwithstanding the fact that by converting the house of God into a battlefield, all principles and percepts of the ten Sikh Gurus were thrown overboard. It must be admitted that the tenacity with which the militants held their ground, the stubborn valor with which they fought the battle, and the high degree of confidence displayed by them merits praise and recognition. The Sikh general to whom both Brar and Shubek reported during the liberation of Bangladesh had this to say about the Operation Blue Star. The army was used to finish the problem created by the government. This is the kind of action that is going to ruin the army. Though the militant Khalistan movement was over, its repercussions were yet to be felt. In our next video, we will discuss the assassination of Indira Gandhi, which remarked the end of an era. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and comment because discussion is solution. For more discussions, please subscribe our channel.